I have many Muslim friends from uh, all over the world. Uh, they come to this country, uh, they love the freedom of worship, the freedom of education they get. Uh, even in Turkey, you can wear a hijab while you're at the university. Uh, one thing that comes to point always is they consider America a model Islamic country. And you made the claim that Islam wouldn't be able to create a country as the United States. How would one defend that position? With great ease. <laughs> With great ease. Are you a Muslim yourself? No, I was. Okay. With great ease. Recently, the King of Arabia, the King of Saudi Arabia, gave $10 million to Harvard University and $10 million to Georgetown to open up chairs of Islamic studies for the sake of understanding Islam and creating more understanding. I think it's a great idea. They've got the money and want to do it. Great idea. The New York Times journalist said to, he said to him in January 1 issue of um, 2006, she looked at him and said, so understanding is what you see? He said, yes. Are you going to open a chair of Christian studies in Saudi Arabia? He said, no, we don't have any Christians in Saudi Arabia. She said, isn't that the point? If you want people to understand one another and you don't understand the Christian worldview, why do you want the Christian to understand the Muslim worldview? He said, that's not what our donation is all about. We are here to create chairs of Islamic studies. Harvard took it, Georgetown took it. They've got chairs of Islamic studies. Where I, we are at Oxford is the Oxford Center for Islamic Studies, one of the greatest of which Prince Charles is a patron. Fair enough. Why is it that no Islamic country that I know of, like Iran, Malaysia, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, and even Iraq, and even in a moderate country like Turkey. What happened in Turkey recently? The brutal, torturous murder of four people, one or two of whom were tortured for an hour or so. You read that story. Where is the government? Where is the outcry in the media in those places? There was a little bit of this, a little bit of that. If when I was in Bethlehem, Israel, I was writing my book, The Prophet and the Priest, Jesus, uh, the Prince and the Prophet, Jesus Talks to Muhammad, which will be released posthumously. It's, in, it's ready and they're all in their lock and key. <clears throat> because I'm not yet ready to sign my will. Because uh, where there's a will, there are lots of relatives. Uh, <clears throat> I was talking to the professor of Islamic studies. It's a candid conversation, and I spent some time with the Grand Mufti, my videographer, Bob Tiger, who's here managing all of this. He was with me. So I go to this professor of Islamic studies, and I say to him, the Quran says there's no compulsion in religion. He said, that is correct. I said, if your daughter, I pointed to his daughter's picture on the, on the desk there, I said, if she became a Christian, what would you do? He didn't bat an eyelid. He looked at me and said, I'd kill her. I said, you'd kill her? He said, yes. I said, you would personally kill your daughter? He said, let me put it this way. I will put every, do everything in my power to keep her from making that change. But then I will turn her over to the authorities and they will have to do the execution, but I will have her killed. I said, so there is compulsion in religion. There's no freedom to disbelieve. There are people in Malaysia today who were misidentified as birth according to parentage and were listed as followers of Islam who are now asking to be removed from that because one of them is a Buddhist from a Buddhist family. You may have followed that case. He doesn't even have the right to go to court to ask for the rightful claim of his own parents' religion. 
So if Islam wants to be seen as on a par with America where there's freedom to disbelieve, then it should give its citizens the freedom to disbelieve as well. I've spoken about this at the highest level to ministers of religion and so on, and I'll say this on the positive side. I'm grateful to God that they've given me the honor of speaking there many times. I've been to some places I can't even publicly mention to you, and Michael has spoken at madrasas. Our team is invited. We are in many, many Islamic countries. We go there and we truthfully but cordially engage them uh, with students, with faculty. I speak very respectfully, but I ask hard questions because they ask me hard questions. America will never force religion down your throat. If it does, it is in violation of its own constitution. That's why I think a theocracy is not what we need. We need the freedom for the Christian to be a Christian. My question to the academy is, why do you allow the legis legitimation of any other, uh, legitimizing any other belief system, but you delegitimize Christianity on the campus? That is a prejudice. I, you're asking me. You're the ones that have to go to work tomorrow in school. Let's take two more. Let's take two more. Then. Two, two more? Yep. Yes, sir.